Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Ubuntu 23.04 inside VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, you're going to want at least 4 gigs of RAM, 25 gigs of hard disk space, and two CPU cores. You're going to also want the Ubuntu ISO image file, VirtualBox, and the extension pack. Now, if you don't already have VirtualBox installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. Links will be in the description below for everything that I'm using. If you find this video useful, please smash the like button. Now let's go ahead and install Ubuntu. I'm at my Windows 11 desktop. I have my virtual manager already installed. This is version seven. Now, if you don't already have VirtualBox installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. We're gonna be installing the latest version of Ubuntu today. I'm at the Ubuntu website right now. Make sure I link this in the description below. We'll just jump over to the download homepage and we'll just scroll down a little bit here. So this is the long-term support version 22.04. This version will not expire until April, 2027. So if you want something that's gonna be supported for a very long time, this is the version that you want to install. I have a guide on how to install that in VirtualBox in the description below. We're gonna be doing the latest version. The latest version right now is 23.04. So we'll go ahead and download the ISO image. We'll just click on the link right over here and it's gonna begin downloading the file. The file is 4.6 gigs in size. So you wanna make sure you have enough space for that. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next part where this is complete. Okay, and the download is complete. It's in my downloads folder right over here. I'm gonna minimize it. So when you have this download, you wanna make sure that you have it in a folder that you can point to easily. All right, so I'm at my VirtualBox manager. This is VirtualBox 7. I'm gonna click on the new button up here at the top and I'm gonna give it a name. And the name I'm giving it is just the version number. You can give it any name that you'd like. Next is gonna be the folder. So if you're running into space issues, you can change the folder. Uh, I'll be leaving mine as is. Next is the ISO image file. That's gonna be where we just downloaded it and it's in my downloads folder. I'll go ahead and select that and then click on open. And it's automatically selected these options over here for an unintended installation. And that's because it's a recognized ISO image file. If you wanna go ahead and do that, you can. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be skipping the unintended version so you can see me go through all the steps. So I'll go ahead and click on next. And the first thing it's gonna ask for is hardware. You need at least two gigs of RAM to do this successfully. I usually beef it up a little bit to four gigs, uh, but two is definitely gonna be fine. Uh, CPU cores, one is definitely recommended. One is the minimum requirement. Two is recommended and anything in the green space is great as long as you stay in here and it should run with no issues. We'll go ahead and click on next. So this is gonna be for your virtual hard disk. 25 gigs is pre-selected. You can actually bring it down if you want, or you can leave it at 25, depending on what you're gonna be installing. Uh, the rest of the options you can leave as is. And then we have a summary for everything that we're doing for this installation. Uh, we'll go ahead and click Click on finish. If you ever want to change the options for this, you just have to select the image over here and then click on settings and it'll bring you into a section where you can manually go in and upgrade or downgrade any of the options that you have selected in here. Now we're ready to start the installation so we'll make sure it's selected and then click on the start button. Okay, so we're at the setup wizard. I'm just gonna center this so you can see it a bit better. And the first option is what language to choose. A lot of the options that we're gonna be doing is gonna be based on your own preference. You can go ahead and select whatever you'd like here. So I'm gonna leave it as English and I'm gonna be installing Ubuntu and we'll leave the keyboard as default. I have an ethernet connection right now on my desktop in order to be shared here. So I'll be using, I'll be leaving this option as is. And now you have the option to do a normal installation with all the pre-selected software that comes with Ubuntu. If, you, if space is an issue, you can go ahead and select the minimum installation. And you have the option to download and install additional support for different types of media formats. I'll go ahead and click on next. And now it's gonna go ahead and erase disk. I get, this, I get asked this a lot. This is just the virtual disk. It's not your actual hard drive on your computer. The space that we allocated in this case is the 25 gigs when we did the setup that's what's gonna be erased and formatted only for the virtual machine. So this does not affect your PC. We'll go ahead and click on next. And everything here will be leaving as is, it's ready to install. We'll go ahead and click on the install button. So it's automatically selected my location. I am in Toronto, Canada. You can select the location that you want and then go ahead and click on next. And now we're gonna be typing in a username and password. You can type in whatever you'd like here. Okay, so I've just quickly typed in a password here. And we have the option to require a password when you log in. If you turn this off, it'll automatically log in for you. I'll have it turned on. That's just a good security feature to have on. And then you can go ahead and click on next. And then you have the option to choose your theme if you want light mode or dark mode. 
and then click on next. And now it's gonna go ahead and install the operating system on your virtual machine. This process might take a few minutes. I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, the installation is now complete. We can go ahead and click on the restart now option. It's gonna reboot the virtual machine and bring us back to the login page. Okay, so we're at the login screen and the user that I created is now here. I just have to go ahead and type in my password. And it's just loading up the desktop right now. Uh, if you have any online accounts that you wanna go ahead and connect to your Ubuntu, you can go ahead and do that now, or you can just click on skip. And if you wanna help out Ubuntu by letting them know any issues that are having, it automatically gets submitted here. Under privacy, you have location services where you can turn that on or off. And it's just letting you know the applications that are designed for Ubuntu that can be installed right away using the Ubuntu software app. Go ahead and click on done. Okay, so we're here at our desktop. And if you go up here to the view menu at the top in full screen mode, we'll just say switch. Notice that it doesn't take the entire screen. So what we wanna do is install the guest editions image. So if we go back, we go up to devices and then insert guest edition CD image. We'll get a disc over here for that. Let's open it up. So we have it right over here. We can click on the run software option and it's gonna ask us if we want to run it. We'll go ahead and click on that and it's gonna require our password. It's gonna be the same password that we had created. And now it's ready to install it. So we'll just say yes. Okay, so that has installed it, resized it here. It looks a little bit weird. Let me just stretch it out. What we need to do in order for this to work properly is just make sure that we restart the system. It's not required right now because you can see that I can stretch it, but to make sure that everything is installed properly, we'll just do a quick reboot. All right, so we're back at the login screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my password. And here we go, so we have the entire screen taken up. This is exactly what we're looking for. So you can use this desktop as if it's your PC and not a virtual system. It feels kind of seamless. I uh, hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.